let's talk hip hop in Zambia. So it's a genre that is not packed, that has got no room for a lot of people. If you are going in there to rap more in English, to, be, to sound better than them in English, or better than them in Nyanja and Bemba and what, I think uh, you might be competing against yourself. As much as you tell yourself you are a hip hop artist, artist and you are making money, in Zambia there are only four artists making money. Who <laughs> are those artists? <laughs> of course, there should be Shefi, Bobby East, Slappy and Maki too. People, but a lot of young artists think that's where to go because it's got a lot of airplay and it's making rounds on the countdowns. But when they end up, the, the biggest show they will ever have is at the Freshers Bash. Hello world, from whichever time zone you're catching me from, my name is MD90. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification to all so you do not miss the uploads that come up. Hello world from whichever time zone you are catching me from, my name is MD90 and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification to all so that you don't miss any upload. Well, my guest today needs no introduction. When it comes to the political landscape, music, entertainment, general, you will know by the title of this video I'm talking to Peterson Zaga Life. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm delighted to have you. I've been looking forward to this interview for the longest period of time. Is it? Yes. Oh, it feels good to be here. <laughs> um, uh, let's start from, did you eventually see yourself evolving into politics? Because some of your biggest hits in terms of music, they, they started off being banned by politicians to start with. You find that, no, this, this, uh, as you put out a song, it's banned and people are curious about it and then they find, no, they're, they're more drawn to it. Did you eventually see yourself getting into politics or it was just coincidental? Uh, I think I've been, I was brought up in a political home. Uh, my mom was a typical politician. And um, without knowing, not planning to be in politics, but it becomes your way of life, uh, being interested in what is happening, who has bought what, at how much, uh, what is on the news, uh, just watching uh, people back in our day sitting under a tree listening to news, you start wondering why is it so important when it sounds boring. And then I think you start thinking it's fashionable as, as you are growing up, you also have to sit and like, tune to Radio 2 and listen to, to the news. Yes. And before you realize it, you're getting into understanding issues to do with the church basket, what uh, minimum wage and all that. Yes. And then you you start thinking of what is fair and uh, I found myself in politics uh, really from a point of desire, yeah. uh, not that I figured it out how it works but when I got in I think I realized it doesn't work as I was thinking mm -hmm. and um, it was That's based off the experience with the music or now the, when you... The politics itself, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I, 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 I think I did not really plan to be a politician. I found myself there due to uh, the issues that you feel like maybe I can make a change here. Yes. Yeah. As you, I was growing up. Yeah. As I grew older, I started feeling like I can be part of the political landscape. Yeah. So uh, at, at this point, um, is your political route on pause and the music? Because at some point, you gave an opinion to say, even if I was to get into parliament, Music is part of me, I'm not the relation yeah. is, is that still your opinion or? Music is what everybody knows me for. I am what I am because of music. I bought my first whatever I own through music. Uh, probably I was able to dress myself, cover myself, feed myself, and be called Peterson through music. And it would be very unrealistic or quite uh, short-sighted if I was to say I can stay away from music because I am what I am because of music. And uh, politics, you ask me if it is on, on, on pause. I, I think uh, uh, I am on pause or away from the politics of noise, uh, okay. the politics of uh, uh, 
just dancing to the tune or going with the wind because this is where it looks like it is happening. Mm -hmm. Then you go there um, into politics of ideology now. And uh, when you get into that area, you realize you've got a lot of to learn every day. But when you're on the uh, politics of uh, publicity, yeah, it's all about what I reason is, what makes sense, and I say it at what time. So it, at that moment, that's why we see a lot of politicians saying things that leave you wondering, like, did he really think about it? Or mm -hmm. it's about affiliation. Yes. Yeah. So once you, of course, at every time, whether history or politics is about which side you've chosen to be, mm -hmm. But I think uh, I'm quite more cautious because it's ideology and it's what ideology I choose to stand with. Uh, when it comes to the music landscape, like uh, your one name that peers easily respect, there are, there are people that is making a wave, but when you ask an opinion amongst the peers, like fellow musicians and fellow entertainers, you find a mixed kind of opinions. But uh, you are one person that Slabdi has several times decided to say, if there's one person that I respect in terms of skill set, is uh, Peterson Zagalai. Uh, in fact, several sources have said, So when you get uh, credit from peers like that, what, what, how do you receive that? Yeah, mostly in the industry, you never know how good you are unless somebody mentions it. Because mostly what happened in our industry is that you do something good today, maybe you win an award somewhere outside Africa. When you sing, you stand around your peers, they would rather talk about the go that rush for the beast and ignore what you've achieved. Mm -hmm. uh, but you only know how much impact or what you're becoming when others mention about it. And I think Slab D understands that. He do he does it or he he does it from the point of uh, my brother shouldn't be broken without knowing what he is. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says it because he knows he's great, so if it comes out from him, then probably it builds my my, my morale, it, it makes me think I'm in, in the right standing. But I yes. think he does it from the point of trying to preserve what builds everyone, because he understands there can never be an industry with just one artist. Yes. So the more others feel big, the more yourself become bigger because if a big artist like him mentions uh, Peter Senzagaze uh, as one of the good artists, I think it just puts him in the right book with almost everyone. His fans, fans to be, and those that uh, will never even listen to him say, Oh, this is a guy with a, a golden heart. Yes. It's rare that artists do, do that. Yes. So when he mentioned it, I, I think it puts me in a place of respect like i give him a lot of respect for that and i consider him very very uh skilled uh, quite um, impactful like he's apart from praising me i think he's created a lot of other artists he, he's met boys that have just got voices and turned into superstars uh, though people get excited and forget how much he's put in their, the, 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 to, to, to their careers yes. and think now he, there should be a difference in how everything is handled, but I think he's quite a very good guy in building the careers of many others apart from himself. So him uh, trying to, 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 to mention me is just one of his attributes. He does this for young artists, small artists, big artists, not non-artists. Even people with voices who've never sung before, yeah. I think Slabdi has made them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bobby has shared an experience where you and Ben Blazer went to Shunga to go and sign them. Like, how, how did, did you catch the wind of uh, uh, Bobby East and uh, J.O.B. at a time when, when you drove uh, to Shunga? Okay, so I, I learned about Bobby East through Flex Viewman. Flex is a young brother to my wife. Yes. So we went to drive somewhere and he put his flash there. He played his music and some songs that he did with his friends. So as mm -hmm. I was producing, says a friend of mine called JLB. I was the other guy, the other guy called Bobby East and everything. So I called Ben and told him there's uh, some guys who are talented somewhere. So he mm -hmm. said, okay, cool. Also, you came across them first. Yeah. Uh, I went there in the evening with my wife. That's when I met JLB and them. And uh, from there, I talked to Ben Blazer. Then we took JLB to the Copper Belt. When he was on the copper belt, that's when he started inviting his friends to go and record there. 
uh, mostly when the studio is free or when Ben Blazer is out of the country. That's when the guys would go there, Francia, Bobby East, uh, and everyone else. And uh, there's something big that's coming up next, man, uh, which you're working on. Uh, I think this is the second of his kind. I know Danny has done a fist before. This is his only second one. I'm not aware of any other artists particularly doing a fist. How's uh, Zaga fest different from a, a Peterson concert, a typical Peterson concert? Okay, so mostly a Peterson co concert is always about Peterson. A festival is about a lot of different artists that are brought to, together. Uh, it could have been a sadic music concert, but I've seen a lot of sadic music concerts being done. So the ideology really for us is to involve a lot of other artists from outside Zambia. This also, it's not primarily just Zambian acts, actually. Yeah, Zambia. but mostly Zambian artists taking the prominent stage. We want to incorporate. We've always seen a lot of artists come to Zambia and go back, and Zambian artists being treated like by the way. So we are trying to create something that incorporates and makes everyone at the same level in the way they are being uh, portrayed, uh, handled, and are portrayed out there. So Zaga Fest is is is, is all about. Um, Accepting the status quo, our music is playing more in the Sadiq region than any other music is playing in Zambia. Maybe house music can, and, and Nigerian music, which is in the West, but any other music uh, from Zimbabwe, Namibia, Mozambique, Malawi, I think Zambian music is playing more out there. If you travel as a Zambian, you realize and appreciate just how big Zambian artists are out there. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of us have got, had the privilege to at least two or some of these countries have shows in these other countries, then you realize we're just as big as. And you can start hearing it from vibe from the other guys, like from Zimbabwe, saying yes. your music is playing so much, how about you push our music also in your country? But they were asking you to push the Yeah, uh, the yeah, music. yeah. So this is when we are starting, and because we didn't have quite a very big budget for everyone, mm -hmm. our hope was that we could get one from Zimbabwe, one from Malawi, and uh, one uh, from almost the neighboring countries, yes. but uh, uh, because we're just starting, and then, yes, this kind of yeah, we'll be doing it probably month end of September. And well, this is not the last for this year. You're doing another. No, one. We'll be doing it there this time around. We're just doing um, uh, this is a start. So the introduction, we, we thought, yeah, we thought so that we put good planning to it. We can have quite a long, like a year and a half to plan for the next one. Yes. Yeah, so that's where we started with um, just a DJ from Namibia uh, oh, yeah. called uh, DJ Sia and one from Botswana called Atimi. And these are quite very big DJs and musicians. They are not just, I've, I've heard a lot of uh, people complain, why are you not incorporating Zambian DJs? Okay, so these guys are called DJs, not Yes, yes, uh, the actual musicians. Yeah, they're yeah, actual musicians. That's like common in Botswana. I think in South Africa also. Yeah, but like DJ Cosmo. Oh, uh, like you say DJ Cosmo yes, here, yes. he's not a DJ. He's a DJ, but he, he, he is more he's a musician. musician. So DJ Latimi makes music, performs music, and plays music on stage. So it's a, uh, it's a start. Uh, we are dreaming big. Probably next time we can have... Uh, uh, so are you better looking at uh, it becoming over uh, uh, a number of days or is it still going to be a... a two, day? two days. Because uh, if we incorporate about an artist from each country, then we we'll need two days. It's mm -hmm. a festival for two days. So our, our, our dream and plan is that it will be happening Friday and Saturday. Okay, so for the people that are just coming across the information, what details do they need to know where they get the tickets? Okay, so okay. this is the uh, a concept where we have uh, probably the people that started uh, uh, this kind of music that we're talking about. We just unfortunately that George Bang was not alive, he was going to be there because I think he created the genre himself from his brain with whatever was going on in his mind. But the artist that he really built this with. Uh, JK, uh, Danny are part of it and uh, these are people that have played a very big role in my career. We're hoping we could have MC Wapino but it's gospel now and we don't want to be in, in that setup. So he didn't do his catalog? No, 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 no mostly he, I have the rights for doing M MC Wapino's catalog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. We could really reach that level. I think I needed to, to announce that one day formally but I, I, I practically got the right to perform. MC, MC songs, yeah. 
and um, we have Danny Pedo, yes, who yes, yes. was very pivotal in, the, in making Zambian music, having a countdown and a, just a radio show for Zambian music, which was called The Motherland Vibes, mm -hmm. who also turned out into a musician. Yeah, yeah. He's got about three albums, so he's part of the performance. Mm -hmm. We have Moza Geta, yes, who brought yes. in a sound that... Mm -hmm. the time, the music. Yeah, where people started creating their own sounds now. At least we had Kasman uh, back in the days. Mm -hmm. And then Mozageta came with Chunda. And uh, when the copper boat started happening, we had Daddy So. Uh, and he's a brother of mine, I think, uh, at the time I was recording my album, my second album, Popo Jan, which really made an impact. I, I bet was to be. Yeah, I was staying by Daddy So's place for about seven months, so he holds that special place mm. to my career. Yes. Um, then uh, who else is on that one? Uh, General Ozzy, I see. General Ozzy, of course, because he featured on my first hit ever. Okay. He was the first uh, known artist to accept to go to the studio with me and actually record. At that point, you are still writing music in the background because I, I, I'm aware that you used to write music for his crazy, or crazy, and the number of other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I wrote Wow. Yeah, Yes, uh, I worked with Winston Moyo. I was back, back crazy. I also worked with Mainza at some point. And, uh, As a songwriter or uh, in terms of... Just uh, mostly I, I would do the Zimmer's past yes. uh, for performances and everything like that. Yes. And um, uh, I've worked with Bob Mabege. I think that's where I learned all what kind of content Zambia wants to listen to Whoa. from Bob, yeah. Is he part of the lineup that's performing uh, at Bob, unfortunately, time? hasn't been around. He's been up and about, but we are trying to get him there. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is on what date again? The 3rd of June at Mika. The VIP ticket is at 250 and the ordinary is about um, uh, 150. Why we chose Mika? Because we know it's winter. We are getting into winter. Though nowadays winter is always cold late June, July into August, I don't know why it is shifted. Yeah, it has moved up. Yeah. So, but we have to choose a place that is enclosed. Uh, then with a lot of people, then it gets warmer. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, taking them to an open space in a uh, nice stadium or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So yeah. when as time goes on, when we, we do it somewhere around summer, September, we can do it in an open space and quite a bigger space. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the information that you need to know about the Zaga Fest is on the screen. Have a look at it, and uh, you should visit definitely. The lineup is 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 overwhelming. You you love it definitely. Uh, I, I, mostly, uh, it's a live band. Most yes, everyone is performing live. Yeah, um, the DJs have got that. Uh, uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, when you play. You mix live and uh, and, 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 and play, play back. back, yeah. Back so, track. yeah, backtracking, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Backtracking, mm -hmm. yeah. So, there's backtrack uh, for the DJs that are coming abroad from abroad because they wouldn't have enough time to yes, with the yeah. bands right. from here. But mm -hmm. a, a couple of keyboard players are going through their works. So, but everyone else is uh, working. We have uh, Zaga Life Band, which is my band, and also mm -hmm. More Fire Band, which is Danny's band. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, what would be your words to people that have been, you've inspired a lot of people without a doubt in your career. Um, a, a young that is looking up to you, that's looking to get into the path that you've taken in terms of music. And uh, what would be your words to certainly believe? Mostly what I tell the young artists, the new ones, is uh, there's always the louder genre that doesn't have money. It doesn't have fans that have money. And there's always the so ignored genre that has a lot of fans with money, people that have made it in life. And when you choose a, a, an, an audience that you want to start making music for, I think try to do a research on what kind of music they were playing when they were young and growing up, when they were in university, when they were in college and high school. That sound is what makes sense to them. Any other sound that comes after that they think is nothing. It's like the, the ones that are 18 years today, this is the sound they'll cherish. So in future, if an other artist wants to make music, they have to make music that relates with the music that is playing now, because that's the only music they'll consider big. So if you want to make music for someone who's a managing or marketing director at some bank, at corporate world, it's got farms, it's got homes, it's got 
property is that money and you want that money also to come to you try to find out the music that he was making he was listening to we all make music that we don't enjoy we make music that we think the target market we've chosen is enjoying if i was to make music that i love i was going to make a lot of hardcore dance or, but i know the market for that is very little in zambia so i end up mixing rumba and raga to create a genre that the audience with money can so that if I put my show at 350 or 500 they can still afford it. it's nothing to them because I'm making the music they enjoy it yeah so consider the business aspect of the, your career don't just look at what you're interested in but mostly these are issues that a lot of artists won't tell you they wouldn't want you to know but I learned from MC Wab when I learned from Danny and they were open with me others wouldn't Mm -hmm. So I you're passing on the information. I just, uh, for me, I uh, I just let it. Make a comment. Let me be a bit controversial here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk hip hop in Zambia. I, I know this will be a sensitive topic, but as much as you tell yourself you are a hip hop artist, artist and you're making money in Zambia, there are only four artists making money in hip hop. <laughs> Who are those artists? <laughs> of course, there should be Sheffy, Bobby East, Slabi, and Mark too. So whether they bring, bring Sakodi or another hip hop artist from America, they have to choose among the four. They either choose two, and if they're choosing two, they're actually choosing Slab D and one from Coppola or Sheffy or Mark II. If they choose Mark II, they have to choose Bobby East. If they choose four, they have to choose the four. If they choose three, it's among the four. It's rare to find a hip hop show where Casper is performing and they are all hip hop artists are getting paid. So, it's a journal that has already been monopolized and to surpass any of them you have to work very hard so if you go into the journal for hip-hop you need to think bigger and understand what these guys are doing if you're going in there to rap more in english to be to sound better than them in english or better than them in nyanja and bemba and what i think uh, you might be competing against yourself because they've understood the art, they know what people want to hear and it is really just between the, the, the four. So it's a genre that is not packed, that has got no room for a lot of people but a lot of young artists think that's where to go because it's got a lot of airplay and it's making rounds on the countdowns but when they end up, the biggest show they will ever have is at a freshers bash which is just an illusion. But Slab D is cutting checks, Mark II is cutting checks, Bobby East is cutting checks, Chef is cutting checks. It's not debatable, you cannot run away from it. But to for a big concept to be put and for you to make sure that it's you who's picked, not Slab D, I think that's a mile away dream. That it needs someone with a lot of drive to surpass that. And to the guys the are not you, you need a lot of drive to be that for yeah. and that's a factor you yeah. know i've very considered it but yeah. yeah when you look at all the lineups but when it comes to singing which people are running away from your maps can happen exile is still happening b1 is still happening roberto is still happening everyone who sings can happen everywhere because why it's easy even the maid can sing along the, the maid can trap along even kitchen party, they can play your maps. It's about choosing a genre that will be quick to pay you, not the genre that will pay you but make you die for you to get paid. <laughs> Hip hop pays, but it's a very competitive industry. So, not to stop anyone from going there, but go there with knowledge that you are going there into the lion's den. They are not playing there. I see a lot of rappers making noise, even dissing the same four. Mm -hmm. But the same four know where the check is. And they really, really smartly put their music to cater for a lot of edges. Before Mark II was just rapping, today there's a lot of melody in Mark II's songs. Oh yes, yes, that's it. He knows what singing does to do. I think most of the hottest songs Slap D has done has got a very sweet chorus. Good example is Toil Toliwe by Wheels. 
that direction is what has been. I think music, singing is, if some of us had voices to sing, it would be bigger than this. But we just try to make tunes because we know tunes help. So don't run away from singing and throw yourself in fashion. <laughs> no, that, that's advice that everyone needs to hear. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you next time. The original Zam Dance or Emperor Peter sends a guy representing for the dance of fraternity and the people they've seen. One leg in the water, another one at the fire. Just want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, MD90. Enjoy some interviews right there.